two thirds of my life has existed with gay people not being able to get married, of having to do things like go through adoption agencies to adopt one another in order to get the same legal protections that you would have under marriage. All righty. Let's go ahead and talk about a thing. Now, technically, this is going to begin uh, with a conversation from Marjorie Taylor Greene, but we're going to move it a little past that. We're going to use her as a springboard. It's about the most useful thing she's ever done. So before we do to that, let's go ahead and talk about the fan art section. The first one we have here is from Salem, not the Salem behind uh, the Virgin Killer sweater model, but a different Salem. I finally finished the art I made back at the start of the month. Say hello to some kind of villainous Cirrus. I have a feeling this is going to show up in somebody's D&D campaign. I'm like 90% certain. The next one we have is from Ashy. I finally got around to finishing this is the subtext there. And you know what? The energy. Also, just the, the dark eyes make me feel like this is almost a mannequin. Uh, the skin color helps with that as well. Uh, nightmare fuel for people who want to to use that if they desperately not want to definitely looks good though the last one we have here is from as soon as i can get it to work bah, 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 bah. this one is from the mini ace it is a 3d necosaurus blepping how cool would it be if someone uh made rpg maker sprites of cirrus well i guess we'd find out you've probably spoken into existence at that point with that said, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. As always, if you want your fan art to be shown in a future episode, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, so Marjorie Taylor Greene had a take about people's sexualities. I want to uh, I want to go ahead and showcase that as the springboard for a discussion. So let's begin that. Should be what they do sexually. That's not our identity, and that should never be taught that way. So uh, according to Marjorie Taylor Greene, our, our sexuality, so the the people who we fuck basically should never be uh, our identity, should never be a prominent part of our identities. Cool. Then I sincerely hope that you never address yourself ever as either a mother or a wife, because those should never be parts of your identity. I mean, let me get this straight. Your children are born only because you fucked. That that should not be a part of your identity then, by your logic. Uh, and your husband, well, you fuck him too, I imagine, poor guy. So yeah, okay. Wife and uh, wife and mother, completely useless identifiers. They have to do with fucking. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. It's not about judging someone for what they do. Yes, it's it is. It's not about judging them for their choices. Yes, it it's is. It's not about judging them for how they dress. Yes, it is. It's about removing those identity politics out and judging people on their character. Hey, she did the thing where you do the, the kind of Martin Luther King quote. You kind of do the Martin Luther King quote. Kind of, sort of. You, like, kind of step into it a little bit. You know, I want to judge people not on the uh, the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That thing? Aw, conservatives fucking love that quote so much. Anyway, um, so let's talk about a couple of things here. Uh, most people who happen to be gay do not make it a gigantic part of their identity. Now, they might have a gay flag. Uh, they might even have it in their Twitter handle. Uh, they might talk about it a lot, but it is not the most like the, the them being gay and who they fuck as a gay person are two separate conversations. Their identity is probably more tied in with the fact that they happen to be gay and also oppressed than the fact that they happen to be gay, period. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's take a quick, let, let's, 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 let's have a conversation real quick about the past. Uh, let's keep this focus to the United States. Our pride parades began uh, because of what? Uh, chat, do you want to, uh, do you, you want to go ahead and, and, and let me know? Go ahead. Good. I, I'm sure most people, I'm sure most people know uh, what actually began our modern pride parades. But if, if you don't, we'll get to it. But I want to see if somebody in chat gets it. Because at ah, Asina Salen got it. Evening, war, uh, evening Warmth got it. Sto 
Stonewall. The Stonewall Riots. Interesting. Okay, let's talk about Stonewall for a second here. Now, aside from the issues with Stonewall uh, and trans issues that have been brought up recently, uh, we do need to talk about how important it was for the gay community. If we're just talking about that, okay? She she has the conversation of sexualities, so let's keep the conversation of sexualities just for the purpose of this. Okay? Yeah, I know there's a lot of trans erasure with Stonewall. That's why I said, like, barring the significant issues that have been brought up with Stonewall recently, we're going to talk right now for this purpose just about Stonewall and being gay. So let's talk about pride. Uh, Kidder Doodle says, uh, you sound dumb, but what was Stonewall? Oh, we need to actually do a whole episode of the Stonewall riots. That's a thing we probably need to do, all things considered. Because honestly, there's a lot to go in there. But basically, basically, the Stonewall riots, uh, they're also known as the Stonewall Uprising, uh, took place in the 19, uh, late 1960s in New York uh, after uh, local police raided, uh, what was it called? But a bit of Oh, yeah, they raided the Stonewall Inn. The raid sparked a riot among the bar patrons and the neighborhood residents as police started taking employees and patrons of the bar away. Now, the Stonewall riots served as the catalyst here in the United States for the gay rights movement. Uh, and then, of course, the narrative goes that around the world, uh, it started getting more and more important uh, from that point on. So what was Stonewall in? We'll go ahead and call it just in broad terms, a gay bar, a gay bar. The Stonewall riots took place because, I mean, we used to not be anywhere near as hospitable to uh, gay people in the United States as we are now. We still have ways to go, obviously, but we're better now than we used to be. So with Stonewall, as as terribly as I am, I am just oversimplifying this we had a community of people a group of people who had to fight for their right to exist to exist publicly in any way shape form or capacity now i have a question when the world at large or at the very least your country is telling you as an individual that you should not take pride in who you are that what you are is disgusting that what you are is gross in the eyes of god that what you are is a failure of the american system for producing good and upstanding citizens what happens you get one of two major scenarios. Scenario A, you get somebody uh, dropping themselves into the closet and desperately trying to create themselves in the image of what society wants them to be. But on the other hand, you might make somebody more proud of who they are. Their identity becomes infinitely more important in, uh, in direct relation to the ways in which you've tried to strip it away from them. Now, I'm not saying that Marjorie Taylor Greene has specifically tried to do this, but she's, what, 50 years old? Pretty sure she fantasized about it at some point. Who knows? I am not in her head. I cannot make those decisions. I have no way of knowing. But it needs to be noted that when you push somebody down repeatedly, an entire community of people, for something they cannot help that does not harm anyone, your attraction to a dude does not harm them. You fucking a dude doesn't harm them. And if you happen to be of the other side of the gender spectrum, then you fucking that side does not hurt anybody either. I cause as much damage if I were so inclined uh, having sex consensually with a dude as I do with a girl. Assuming that the likeliness of pregnancy is a zero, which I mean, in many cases it is. So. It needs to be noted, Marjorie, that to argue that being trans shouldn't be such an important part of your identity, being gay shouldn't be such an important part of your identity, who you have sex with shouldn't be important, much like how you're forgetting the implications of the fact that you being a mother only comes down to the fact that a dick was in you. You being a mother and you being a wife comes down to the fact that you fucked your husband. Just as I can boil down two of probably the most important modifiers to your person, uh, to your person, 
I can boil them down to you fucked a person. Who the fuck cares? It's that easy to boil it down to that. So when you tell people who are gay that you're going to, uh, that they are boiling their identities down only to who they're fucking and not the actual thing that's happening, their identity as a gay person as separate from their ability to engage in sex, you're not only doing them a disservice, you are showing yourself to not be able to take it if the same exact measures were taken against you. Wait, isn't this hypocrisy in that they claim uh, Christians were persecuted? They persecute people who don't conform? Hey, you got it in one. But I'm not here to talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene's brand of Christianity. I'm not here to talk about any of that. I'm here to talk about the fact that if you don't want people to take pride in a thing, then maybe you should check the history of how often they were told not to take pride in that thing at all. And as a minority group, were literally stripped of their rights in doing so. I don't think people realize, maybe we've maybe we've just become so accustomed to it in the last decade, but the ability to be legally married as a, a federally protected thing in the United States is only 10 years old. <laughs> Two thirds of my life has existed with gay people not being able to get married, of having to do things like go through adoption agencies to adopt one another in order to get the same legal protections that you would have under marriage. If you don't want people to take pride in things, I can understand the position, but you have to ask yourself why they're taking pride in it. If we take certain things in categories, uh, why are there people of color in the United States of, of various sex that would take pride in their heritage? Well, for some of them, their heritage was stripped away from them uh, violently in a past that none of us had any part in, but it still happened and we can't really unhappen it. So sometimes you'll find people taking pride in that because of what happened in the past. That's important. That's an important thing to talk about. Uh, for some people, we blatantly oppressed them. And so they'll take pride in their heritage that way. It can get a little weird if we talk about people being proud of being white because at that point what accomplishments do you have killing the natives okay cool uh, i i guess i too am proud of the smallpox blankets except not really we aren't the oppressed minority haven't been probably never will be but when a minority group does take pride in something that they have been told not to where their rights have been stripped away over the years, maybe it's a good idea to consider that before you go up on a podium and boil their entire identities down to who they fuck. Lest it happen to you. Yeah, just like uh, turfs reducing people only to their crotches. Crotch reductionism. There's sex suspended women and everything in between. Uh, I don't think your personality should be only one thing. That way the danger lies. But saying the one of the things shouldn't be important is total bullshit. Well, true. But again, I, I know nobody who is gay where that is the only aspect of their personality that matters. I know people that very willingly lean super hard into gay Hollywood stereotypes. And yet there's a shit ton of other aspects of their personality than just that, nor would they boil themselves down an identity that way. So it always gets really weird to me when people like Marjorie do that. Wasn't that a huge part of past feminist movements that uh, women are more than their uh, genital slash capacity to be mothers? Yes, that is an important part of that. But if Marjorie wants to boil gay people down to who they want to have sex with, then Okay, cool. In conversations with her, we could just be equally, equally as dismissive. This is the great thing about malicious compliance when it comes to things like this. When it comes to things like malicious compliance, you can take what somebody is doing or telling you to do and then run with it to the nth degree. And when you do that, they start to realize how stupid the things they're saying are. What do you consider if your brain is put into a robot? Well, currently you'd be considered dead uh, as currently the tech doesn't exist for that to work. But maybe one day. Is it a cyborg? Uh, yeah, maybe. Potentially you'd be a cyborg. 
but I don't I don't think we're at that point. Anywho, point is people like Marjorie try to argue that gay people are boiling themselves down to only who they have sex with. Most gay people aren't actually doing that. But if they so what ends up happening is the only people who are actually culprits of this are Marjorie and her constituents. Anyways, that was a whole conversation I wanted to have about pride in things that you didn't earn. You didn't earn being gay, but you probably got told you shouldn't be. And you being gay didn't hurt anybody. So now we've created a problem. We've created a world where it's more likely that this person who happens to be gay is going to identify with pride in being gay more. People like Marjorie create the world where it is more likely that those people will end up taking pride in those innate characteristics of themselves. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. They create the world that they say they hate, and then they get to fight against their imaginary enemy until their term runs out and they die. I am gay, but I don't sex. What does that make me, Ace Gay? Behind the eyes of every person are decades of experience in a world we can only imagine. To see that and only get one image or concept is to lack creativity and imagination as an observer. Very, very well said. Kira Doodle says you can love someone without fucking them. This is ignoring how they also hate ace people. They hate ace people because they can't produce more white babies. Let's go ahead and just be completely honest. That is half the reason. And if Marjorie doesn't want me to take that, uh, that stance... Uh, when it comes to hatred of ace people, then maybe don't show up at a Nick Fuentes meeting uh, where he talks about the secret sauce of young white men. Maybe. Just maybe. Not that Nick Fuentes hasn't had a ton of secret sauce from young white men on him, specifically of the Catboy variety. Anyway, Punk Barista Witch, thank you for resubscribing. And with that, I want to throw the conversation back to all of you. As grossed out as you probably are by that statement. Still probably important to note that, uh, at the end of the day, take pride in what you will, so long as it hurts no one, and you have good reason to. I would say that a random-ass politician trying to take your rights away, whether it be Marjorie or otherwise, is a damn good reason to take pride in yourself. Anyways, as always, everyone, insert in the video tagline here.